to my channel. So today I am going to paint my son's room. He's about to turn one soon. So I'm like, let me just go ahead and get his room ready because I'm going to stop breastfeeding soon and I need him to be sleeping in his own room. And that's going to really cause me to lose even more sleep because I'm going to be sleep training him. But I need to have a room ready for him. So I'm going to show you guys how I paint a room. This is my second time painting a room. The first time I painted a room, I painted my daughter's room and I'm gonna show you guys their room real quick. It's a mess, but. Damn, did you get enough to eat? I still have it. Yeah, we like All right, coming right up. So I painted the room first and <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but I did learn, I did realize there were some mistakes or there was some things that I could have done better. So I'm gonna try it with this. So first I'm gonna show you guys some supplies that you need. Um, this has worked pretty good for me and they're pretty, this is some cheap stuff that you can use. So this is what you need. So I started off buying this and this is what I've always, well, so far I've used. It's the smooth to semi smooth surfaces, microfiber, 10 piece, and then, you know, you have the different sizes, nine by three by eight, and then you have this rod. This little one, I think this little one is like, oh, three, three over eight inches mini roller. That is a must for your edges. And then you also need this brush, right? Really important. And then you need some tape. I would recommend buying fat tape. I didn't know at the time that fat tape was more important, but yeah. So then you need these steering sticks. Steering sticks. And that's it. That is all you need. Oh, and then you need these liners, right? So there's this liner right and they go in here okay so I'm going to set up first you want to make sure you have like one liner by the way one liner in here it goes in here so the liner goes in the tin just like that paint tin or paint pan whatever you call it right so I'm gonna set that up later. First, I'm going to tape off all my edges. And this part is like a hard work. If you're like, oh, I'm dreading the painting part, at least the day before, go ahead and tape. But me, I'm just gonna go tape and paint at the same time. I'm gonna try to do my best to hurry, to hurry up. So with that being said, hope you enjoy watching this video. Oh, and I also have this painting rod to reach at the top, right? So we have that. And then I got some, oh, forgot, I got some, this one, one coat coverage guaranteed, interior semi-gloss one, stain blocking paint and primer. So I, it has the paint and the primer mixed up. This one I got, so I got blue. This is what I'm gonna color his thing. Oh, and then I also got some painter's plastic. You need that to um, cover your carpet and yeah, I got that from um, Lowe's, 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 Walmart. Okay. Before we begin painting, you want to make sure that you tape your edges. Now you want to make sure the tape is sticking really well to the wall. Don't be scared. Like with me, when I first started taping my girl's room, I was too scared to make sure that tape was really good on the wall because I was like, is this tape gonna peel the paint off? But no, it's so important for you to get as close as you can to the area you wanna paint. I can't really describe, but you can see how I go really slowly and make sure it's sticking to the wall really, really good because it's so easy for you to get paint on places you don't wanna get paint on. And you also, it's just also easier if you just make sure you get as close to the edge as you can. That way you don't have to do too much with your paintbrush when you try to paint the edges. I'm telling you, this is just gonna be easier for you and hopefully you guys 
take your time don't you don't want to speed this process up because if you just go taping wherever you want you're gonna have crooked lines all over your edges and then you're probably gonna have paint all over your closet or on your window sills or wherever you didn't tape well and that's including like when you start doing the floor so I'll show you that in a little bit So I decided to speed it up, but as you can see, I'm folding the tape over. That way I'm protecting the closet doors, the closet edges. That's why it's better if you get tape that's thicker, maybe like an inch and a half or two inches. I just could not find my thick tape that I had bought. So I just was like, let me just use this one inch tape. It's probably like, no, it's mostly an inch, one inch tape maybe that I'm using, but I really don't like the skinny one like don't do it just go ahead and get you some thick tape because it's so much easier and here I'm taping the bottom now this is so important just go ahead and get as close to the edge as you can and then you're gonna like you know put the tape over it and then here you want to unscrew okay I couldn't find my flathead screwdriver at this time but take the outlet covers off and tape over the outlet. So here is when like two inch tape would come in handy. If you could put two inch tape at the ceilings especially, that way when you roll your paintbrush all the way up, it doesn't get on the ceiling. Now with this one inch tape, paint will get on the ceiling if you roll your paintbrush all the way up to the wall. So when you start painting you don't get too close you get as close as you can to the edge but not close to where your paintbrush is touching the ceiling but like i said it'd be so much easier if you had the two inch one that way you can just roll all the way up to the tape and all the way back down just so much easier but here if you just have one inch tape like i do this is what happens and this is what you have to do if i had more time i probably would have did like two rows but I don't got time like that, so I didn't. And here, I didn't know how to take the fire alarm off, so I just went ahead and did this weird way of taping the edge. But literally, I even when I painted, I still, I don't know how, but I happened to get paint on the fire alarm. But yeah, so this is how I taped over, or taped around the fire alarm. I mean, it's not the best, but it'll have to do. See, looks like the previous owners tried to take it out somehow, but I just couldn't figure it out. And here I go. Look, see, I ran out of the good tape, my little scotch tape, and I had to go for this Walmart cheap tape, and this is what happened. But it still works fine. And here I'm showing you guys how I taped the edge. See how close I got? Nope, oh, I got that close. But here I'm about to put the painter's plastic onto the ground. Then grab your scissors and cut the cut to the length of the floor. And I did this all around the floor. So then you open it up and then you go ahead and tape the plastic to the tape, right? Um, I try to tape like right underneath the edge of that tape. Um, and then try to get it as tight as possible to the wall and then go ahead and tape it again. But I just did um, little pieces of tape and then I go back and I add some more tape because it's so easy for your foot to get stuck to the plastic and pull it off and then next thing you know you got paint all over the carpet paint everywhere and you know what if I were you guys I would just go ahead and put on some socks that you're willing to ruin because I had paint all over my feet I don't even know why I wasn't wearing socks but go put on some socks that you want to mess up that way you don't have paint all over your feet because it's so annoying to wash paint off your feet so here I go just putting tape all over the edges um, yes yeah, so go ahead and do that guys
Alright guys, so now that everything is taped up, edges is looking good, the floor is covered as much as possible, go ahead and get your paintbrushes ready and yes. So make sure you have your little skinny roller, your big roller and the paintbrush and then go ahead and grab your flathead screwdriver. Well actually no, get your flathead screwdriver and open the paint, right? And if it's been sitting, you're going to need your stirring sticks to stir it up. So. All I'm doing is trying to pop this lid open. Boom, pop it open. Come on, pop, pop, pop. Um, this thing, hurry up. All right, there we go. And then you're gonna stir it. So this paint already has the primer and paint. All you gotta do is mix it up. Yes, thank you, Sherwin-Williams. <laughs> and after all that's done, you're gonna get ready to pour the paint into the paint pan. And then you go ahead and start painting. So here I decided to paint the edges with a paintbrush first. Now when I did my girls room I decided to paint the walls first and then do the edges. So this time I decided to do the edges first because when I did the wall first and then painted the edges I could I kind of could see like the different textures like the brush texture and the you know the roll on texture so here I decided to do the edges and then after you do the edges with a paintbrush you use your skinny roller and you roll over that so that way it blends well and you want to do this quick enough so that way you can start painting the wall and you don't see like two different textures so here I'm using my small roller this is like the best thing ever guys use a small roller go all around your edges like here I was just like Forget the paintbrush, that paintbrush is taking too long, let me just go ahead and use my roller. Now if you taped really well, you can get so close to the edge, you don't even have to think about using the paintbrush. Now that that's done, go ahead and get that big roller, mm -hmm. okay, roll, roll, roll. Don't roll too much paint because if the paint is dripping and you drip on the wall, you're going to see that drip paint texture on there, you know, like you're going to see that texture like the paint is dripping on the wall and it looks so thick and it's so hard to cover after that I don't even know how to do it. I think you gotta like peel the paint off but regardless make sure you roll onto the paint and um, make sure there's not too much paint on the roller and then just go ahead and roll to the wall now I just go in up and down motions I really don't think there's like a certain way to do this um, I've, done this, I've done this a couple times now and I just keep rolling dip 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 roll 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 dip 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 um, now if the paint your previous paint is darker obviously it's going to take a couple coats and for this room I have the light pink wall so it was easier to cover but I ended up doing a couple layers like between coats you gotta let you gotta give it like two to four hours to dry before you can go ahead and paint over it again so yeah, I just go ahead and paint over the wall to make sure everything looks even and covered. You know when paint is wet, you can't really tell if it's um, even until it's dry. And then you'll see all the spots that you miss. But until then, don't keep trying to paint over what you've already painted while it's wet. Because you're going to mess it up and the paint's going to lift off the wall. And you're going to see your previous paint that's on there. So it's not going to work. You just want to go do a one even coat all across the wall and everything will look good I'm telling you guys so easy do not need to hire anybody you guys can do this ladies women mommies you guys can do this
with this small roller you can get so close to the edge so at this point I kind of gave up my paintbrush because I'm like man I don't got time for this <laughs> so I used the small paintbrush and got so close to the edge because my tape looks so good and it's so close to the edge I can do stuff like this that's why it's so important to take really good so I used my favorite little tiny little paint roller and went up now guys look I have a new outfit on because the next day I looked at the room and was like whoa this room is way too blue let me just do a blue accent wall so I decided to paint over what I painted no actually I decided to paint three walls this off-white color it's so beautiful guys in person I decided to paint it this off-white color and yeah so that blue in the middle is where my daughter want to help me paint the room yesterday and I was like go ahead and paint the room because I didn't even like paint that wall yet so I was like go ahead and paint and now I'm like oh I gotta paint over what she just did so here I'm painting over the blue that she did and I'm painting this wall white and I'm also gonna paint the other two walls that I colored blue because I decided I'm just gonna do a blue accent wall just the room was just too blue for me and it was just giving me bad vibes like it, like I don't know I just didn't like it so here I go painting it just want baby boy to have a cute little room so look at this coverage right look at this coverage Sir Sherwin Williams paint is just doing so good on this wall so here I go painting this off-white color which is so beautiful I'm telling you guys when I find the exact color I'm gonna put it in my description and you guys need to get this color it's so cute and here I go just painting over <laughs> It was crazy like I spent all day yesterday coloring the walls blue and it just wasn't sitting right and I decided to grab my other bucket of paint and cover them up so you guys will see here So I decided to keep the wall on the right blue that's gonna be my accent wall and that's where baby boy's crib or playpen's gonna be or his bed whatever but where he lays is gonna be on that side so I have to tape that side of the wall that way I don't get this white paint on that side of the wall I forgot to tell you guys um, between coats you guys do want to take the tape off before it dries because if you don't take the tape off before the paint dries when you take the tape off the next day the paint will come off the wall and you'll just see this thick paint just coming off the wall like you don't like want that so try to take the tape off the wall once you're done painting and then the next day you're gonna have to retape everything but for me I forgot to do that so when I tried to some areas of the wall when I tried to take the tape off it peeled off so I had to go in with my paintbrush and paint the edges so yeah same process guys how I did it yesterday I just pretty much doing the same thing but this time I'm covering the blue that I painted I know I really should make up my mind but like who actually can make up their mind right away right who's who's a decisive person you know sometimes I'm like indecisive because I'm a mom that's what happens but yeah here I go
All right, guys, so this is day three. I didn't record it, but I did put another coat of paint on the three walls that I painted white. And I also did another coat on the wall that was an accent wall just so that everything looked even. And after that, I decided to take the tape off because I was done this day. Took all the tape off and you guys want to do it really slowly because then, I don't know, just, just do it slowly, guys, okay? I know that the paint is fresh and it's wet. Just go ahead and slowly take the tape off. And here I go taking the tape off. <laughs> and my daughter is messing with the camera. She's such a help, a helpful little helper. So here is the final look of the room. It looks so beautiful, really cute. The paint is really wet, so it still looks uneven. But the next day, everything dried up. Everything looked even. It was beautiful. I moved baby boy right in the room along with his things. I mean, it didn't last, but at least I tried. Don't forget to put the outlet covers back on the outlets once the paint is dry. Thank you for watching this video. And Thank you for subscribing. Hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.